Whether it's a product for home or business, farm or factory, you can be sure if it's Westinghouse. Westinghouse and Studio One take this opportunity to acknowledge with pride the results of Look Magazine's second annual television award poll, in which this series has been named the best dramatic program of television. This is the second year in a row that Studio One has, by a vote of the public and the industry, received this signal honor. We wish to thank Look Magazine for the impartial way in which this poll was handled and hope in the coming year to merit the same degree of public enthusiasm. And now to open 1952, we present... Well, of course, that's why I'm here. It sounded so frantic, darling, and unlike you. Are you all right? Oh, perfectly, perfectly. Well, come along into the library. I took the first train from Cambridge. I tried to telephone, but the operator said there wasn't one here. <laughs> Apparently, there's no electricity either. Well, the house has been untenanted for so long, they cut it off, but I manage quite well on candles. Oh, Jeff, what a gruesome ruin. This room was old Sir Nicholas Fenton's library. It's a perfect example of the Restoration Oval. Wonderful, isn't it? It gives me the horrors. Well, it's very practical of you, Mary, I'm sure. But to me, it's rich in all the things I care most about. History, time, the 17th century. I feel as though I belonged in these rooms. Oh, my word, you haven't bought it. Mm, good Lord, no. It's far too expensive for a junior professor of history. Well, where is it you sleep? No, there's one bedroom that's still intact. And look, look what I found in the cellar. All new material that no one's ever seen before. Do you realize what that means? It's the most staggering exhibit of fine print I've ever seen. Oh, and Jeff Esterno. <laughs> I can see how you've been living the past month. Oh, well, it's not been too bad. Oh, I can get you some coffee. Good. If I can find a clean cup. Jeff, aren't you carrying this obsession a little far? Obsession? Well, darling, what would you call it? You know, I've grown rather used to playing second fiddle to history, but at least your former assignations were usually with the British Museum or some other reasonably respectable institution. I'll get your coffee. Something else that's kept you in this untidy mausoleum. Come on, confess, what is it? Here is your coffee. What? You better is have it? your coffee first. Well, I don't really want it, you know. I'd much rather know what made you send me that wire. You just said something about obsession. Well, perhaps that's what it is. Jeff, am I being a fool? Have you found someone else? No, I, I haven't found her yet. That's the trouble. Oh, I see. Do you? Do you understand quite what I'm saying? I've fallen in love with someone I've never seen. Well, that sounds a little as though you're trying to tell me as politely as you can that you've fallen out of love with me. Well, it, it's even more incredible than that, Mary. I've fallen in love with someone who's dead. Dead? Yes, she was murdered very nearly 300 years ago. Oh, well, that rather removes her from the running, doesn't no, it? No, because, because she needn't have died. It would have taken no more than one word of warning to have saved her. I'm going to try and give her that word of warning. <laughs> well, obviously you think I'm insane. Uh-uh, I think you're serious. It's very much more frightening. I am deadly serious. Uh, Jeff, who is this woman? Lydia Fenton. She was married to the Nicholas Fenton who built this house. She was 26 years old when she died. Here, wait a minute. I've got a steel engraving of her. It's the only one in existence. She was very beautiful. 
Why was she murdered? I don't know why. No, who did it? Oh, of course, the records show that someone was tried and hanged for the crime a few weeks later, but no name is mentioned. Was it her husband? <laughs> well, that would be a reasonable assumption, of course, but he didn't. Lydia died of poison June 10th, 1675. And the records show that Nick Fenton was still alive as late as 1714. He was in France at the time. After that, we don't know. Mm, I see. And? I'm going back to save Lydia Fenton. All the way back to 1675? All the way. Jeff. Darling, you've got to come out of this dreadful place with me right away. It's preyed on your nerves long enough. It's too late, Mary. I've made my decision. I, I'm going on a long journey, Mary. I won't be back. Oh, but Jeff. That's part of the bargain. What bargain? Well, it's not something I can discuss. Well, Jeff, I don't pretend to understand any of this, but I do know that it's evil and corrupt, and I'm afraid for you. I'm afraid of leaving you in this dreadful place one day alone and any longer. Alone? Well, is there someone here with you? Nick? Yes, Mr. Fenton? How much time have we? You had better come up, sir. It's getting late. Jeff, who is that upstairs? He, uh... He calls himself the caretaker. Yes, but who is he? I don't know. Jeff, you can't do this. You heard what he said. We've very little time. I can't argue with you any longer, Mary. Please, I'd like you to go. Nothing that you can say now would make any difference. But, Jeff, I can't leave you. Get out! Get out! Very well. But I'm going to come back tomorrow. I won't be here, Mary. You had better come up right away. Close the door. It is important you start out with no false representation. Lydia died June 10th, 1675. That is history, my dear professor. I can offer you a chance to change it, but I cannot guarantee you will succeed. Uh, that is not part of the bargain. I understand. And so, here in this room where your beloved Lydia died, you are willing to sign your oath. Are you quite ready? Well, I know the names of everyone in the household. I know most of their habits. Yeah, but their speech was somewhat different. Do you think you can manage their phrases? Indeed, sir, I have been most diligent in mastering the niceties of their ways. Were it not so, I should scarce have been so uh, forward as to feign so exacting a role. Hmm, that's possibly convincing. <laughs> you will read this through and sign it. I, Geoffrey Crawford, do hereby <coughs> agree to the following. I shall be permitted to return to the year 1675, beginning on the date of May 10th of that year. Well, it's only a month before the date of Lydia's death. That doesn't give me much time. Those are the conditions. I see. In the body and guise of Sir Nicholas Fenton, and to attempt without occult aid to prevent the death of my wife Lydia. It is further agreed that I shall be allowed to live out my full life as Sir Nicholas Fenton until his death, at which time, I shall forfeit my everlasting soul to the powers of darkness. Yes, this is quite clear. No last-minute qualms? None. Good. Now we must hurry. It would be rather awkward were you to arrive hours late when the household was all abed. 
What's this? A small concoction of my own. It will help you sleep. And when you awaken, it will be the evening of May 10th, 1675. A toast, then, to yesterday and to my beloved Lydia. did you call? Judith asked that woman to cease her playing. I cannot rest with that endless tinkling in my ears. I've already sent Giles to speak to her. Ah. Ah, what a blessed thing it is to have quiet again. Take one of the powders to help you rest. I think not. They bring sleep, but they leave me heavy and depressed. Oh, Judith, I am so hot. Too damp a cloth to cool my head. Your fever is worse tonight. Here, mistress. Ah, oh, thank you. That is better. Where is my husband, Judith? Sir Nicholas has not returned from Lord Harwell's. Their meetings grow later each night. I cannot think it is business that holds them to such hours. More likely he is about the town with wenching and drink to shame my name. Would it were so? That woman below is answer enough to the libertine instincts of the man. But these meetings with Lord Harwell are a blacker page. The secret plots to hold this low, degraded king in power and persecute all those who risk their lives to rid us of this godless court. I know, I know all that. And yet I cannot each night forget he leaves me here a bed and ill while he's below with her, supping. I hear them often, knowing how slyly she charms him with her wit and panders to him with her reckless ways. Ah, oh, Judith, Judith, I am not well. Cannot something be done? I am ill, I am oh, ill. Mistress, <laughs> if I... Judith, who rings so late? Cannot be your husband, he would have his key. Go quickly to the banister, see who it may be. Yes, mistress. Good evening, Master. Uh, Giles? You did not have your key? Oh, no, I, uh, I did forget it. My lady is at home. <clears throat> she awaits you, sir. Good, I shall go up to her at once. Mistress York is in the garden, sir. She asked that I let her know the moment you were come. Mistress York? You ordered the wine to be served in the library, sir. You are supping with her this evening, as usual, are you not? Oh, indeed. Well, uh, no, Giles, that uh, from now on, my customary habits may be somewhat altered. Where is uh, Lady Fenton? Why, sir, she has not left her chamber these many weeks. Oh? Well, in that case... Oh, by the by, Giles, do you happen to know what day this is? Why, yes, sir. It is the 10th. Of uh, May? Of May, sir. And the year? Why, the year of our Lord, 1675, sir. Ah, oh, good. <laughs> Thank you, Giles. It is Sir Nicholas, ma'am. He's coming up. Here. Aye. He is, I judge, a bit worse to wear for wine. He spoke most irrationally with Giles. Oh, Judith, I will not see him. I'm not well. Say that I've retired for the night. Oh, dear Lydia. Good evening, Nicholas. I am aware of this great honor you pay me, but I am tired. I, I pray you. Lydia. Oh, Lydia, I can only say that you're more beautiful than ever I'd imagined. The face so delicate and finely chiseled, the halo of dark hair. A 
as usual, you have been drinking with Lord Howell. Oh, one glass only, and a most unpalatable mixture. Nothing more. I wanted nothing to cloud this sight of you. Oh, this is beyond bearing. Would you jest at me when I am ill? Ill? Indeed. And had she waited for you, she could as well have died. Died? What is this, Lydia? How long have you been ill? These many weeks, as you well know. What strange new game is this you play with me? No game, Lydia, believe me, but... You may retire. I would be alone with my wife. But, mistress... Obey me instantly, woman. Do as you're commanded, Judith. Yes, mistress. She seeks but to protect me. Protect you? Many weeks, you say? But what is the cause? Are you in pain? A little. It is nothing. Do not concern yourself with such a trifle as your wife's health. It's been of little enough interest to you until this moment. It may well be that until this moment, I never truly saw you. Oh, my dearest, forget if you can what was yesterday. This is no passing impulse, but a deep and lasting love that will continue till... Nick, what is the matter? Let go of my hand. You're no, crushing no, no, it. No, no, do not draw your hand away. Let me see the other. Show me your other hand. Lydia, how long have your nails been like this? Brown, discolored, and the flesh beneath swollen. It is nothing, Nick. Let go of my hand. Do you not know what this means? Has no physician remarked this condition? None has ever glanced at my hands. Idiots, fools. With the evidence staring him in the very face. Evidence, Nick? What? Arson. <gasps> Indeed, the symptoms are all there. Lydia? Someone within this house has been slowly trying to poison you. Poison? This it has been, then, these long six weeks. A slow dying. No, no, we yet have time. We'll find the one who's done this thing and drive him from this house. You know as well as I, Nick, who's done this thing. She awaits you now. Her lips are ready for yours and eager. Who? Oh. Do not insult me with your innocent pretending. Do you imagine I have not known these very many months how it has been between you and my cousin? Who would have better cause to gloat at news of my death than Meg York? For then you would both be free. She would have won. Oh, Lydia, Lydia, darling, I do beg you, if this were true before, I do disclaim it. No one shall come between us. I'll speak with her this night. And to the others, to all, I'll make known my deep distrust and loathing of this deed. It will be stopped. Is there one in this house whom you fully trust? Only Judith. Good, let's have her in. You rang, mistress. My lady tells me you are one whom she can trust. You will, from this day, keep close guard on her, both day and night. There is some evil in this house, and I mean to rout it out. A while, my love. I will return. It is most strange. But when he kissed me then, it reminded me of another kiss I'd most forgot. You will summon the servants, Giles, all the kitchen staff. See to it. Yes, sir. Oh, and Giles, uh, send Mistress York to me here in the library, please. She awaits you now, my lord. How went the meeting? Oh, you did promise to bring me word at once. Mary. Mary? <laughs> Are you already so fickle, Nick? Who is this Mary? No, 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 I, I merely... What trick is this? You have no place here in this house. You have no claim on me now. You're not my wife. I made you no promise ever, then or now. Are you quite out of your wits, Nick? I am Meg. Meg? Well, darling, there is much you should remember beyond my name. And much to be forgot. Know only that what I may have once in some small moment of weakness granted you, I now recline. There should be nothing between us from now on. Is this clear? Once? Can all that we have shared these past three years be covered with so small a word? Oh, cruel it is, Nick, and unfair to slight the more than friendship we have known. Would I have stayed here in this house and borne the humiliation I have for anything so meaningless as once? I was prepared for anything but this. It would be easy with their falseness in her voice, her eyes. 
there is none. And yet Lydia says she holds a dreadful hatred in her heart. Nicholas, speak to me. Mary, Meg, try, I beg you, to understand what I must say. I am not the man you knew this morning. I look the same to you, I carry the name, but I am changed. There is only one person in this world I truly love. And she lies upstairs, sick and in great pain. Whatever has passed between you and me must now be ended. There can be no one in my life from now on but Lydia. So, she has beguiled you again with her false and indecent ways. You do hate her then, do you not? I loathe her with all my heart and for reasons you well know. It could then be you. It could. And what confederates have you used to carry out your plan? Nick, why do you stare at me so? What accusation is this? Surely you can't mean Arthur, that... Arthur, the servants are up and await your pleasure in the hall. You have been called here for good and sufficient reasons. Someone within this house has been making vile attempts to poison your mistress. These then are my orders. By tomorrow morning, every scrap of food in this house is to be destroyed. Cook? Yes, master? Look to it. Every mouthful that you prepare for my mistress is to be tasted by you first. You will taste the herbs and gravies. Giles will bring the tray to you, Judith Pamplin, in your mistress's bedchamber. You will taste each mouthful before it is served to her. If any of you be found in any suspicious act of secreting poison, it will be to the magistrate and Nougat prison. That is all. I may retire. You hear the master's orders. To your quarters. Return to your mistress. You are wondrous convincing, Nick. So now your precious Lydia must be sheltered from all harm. Indeed she shall be. And any that do arouse suspicion in my eyes will find they are no longer welcome in this house. Even you. Oh, so you will threaten me now, even as she has for three years. May it not be that she had reason to suspect you? Oh, Nick. Nick, do not pursue this game. You know full well if you should turn against me now how utterly I shall be alone. Why do you suppose it is that, that Lydia has held this threat over my head these months and months? She knows how I am, penniless, my family dead at her beloved Cromwell's hands. Oh, Nick, if I walk out this door now, I... I walk into the streets. When first I came to that door as a child, she could afford then, as, as my cousin, to, to pity me and take me in. But then, when, when she saw me in your arms, when she saw that you knew I was no longer a child, then her pity vanished. Oh, I have no one but you, Nick, no one. What have I done that you should forsake me now? Have you forgot last night the vows we made? We clung to each other then as though we were the only people in all the world. Oh, say I may stay, Nick, say. Yes. You may stay. Oh, dear Nick. My love has no further meaning to you then. No. It is not a game. It is truly over. Yes. But Nick, why? Why? a moment and look at our Westinghouse program. Just an old-fashioned girl, huh? Well, is it old-fashioned to wash your uh, slips? Well, washing slips by hand may not seem old-fashioned to lots of women, 
but it certainly does to any woman who owns a Westinghouse laundromat. Because you can wash your most delicate things right in the laundromat. Yes, even though the laundromat's washing action is extra thorough, it's so gentle that you can wash your daintiest lingerie, your lovely lacy nylon things, and even your finest curtains right in the laundromat. Let me show you what I mean. Here, for example, is a, a half slip. Now, that's so dainty and fragile that you'd hesitate even to wash it by hand. And yet, this very slip has been washed 27 times in the laundromat. And it's just as lovely as new. Here's something else that's wonderful about the laundromat, too. Suppose that you want to wash just a small load like this. Now, perhaps you think that you'd have to use just as much soap and hot water for this load as you would for a large load. But not with the laundromat. You see, the way to save door here is actually a scale. See? The indicator there says that this is a small load. So you set the water saver dial over here at small. Then you slip the clothes in, add the small amount of soap required for the load, and start the laundromat. You save soap and hot water, and you save money automatically. And your clothes come out so clean, even great big loads of heavily soiled work clothes. And here's the reason. With most washers, the tub is straight up and down like this. And when the dirty wash water drains out, it filters down through the clothes and leaves dirt and soap curds all through them. But with the Westinghouse laundromat, when the water drains out, the basket tilts back like this because of the exclusive inclined washing action. Then the clothes are tossed up to the top of the basket here and the dirty water drains away from the clothes and not through them. The exclusive wash away, rinse away action is exclusive with Westinghouse. It gets dirt out and it keeps dirt out. For proof, I'd like you to take a load of your own clothes to your Westinghouse dealer and see them washed yourself in a laundromat. You'll agree that you can be sure if it's Westinghouse. Now let's return to Westinghouse Studio One and the Devil in Velvet. <clears throat> Forgive me, Mr. Shork, but Lord Harwell is here. Oh, bid him come in. Yes, mistress. And Giles, notify Sir Nicholas. Yes, mistress. Hello? Hey. It's above two weeks since I have seen you. You did get my note. Did? Came at once, as you can well see. Oh, it was most good of you. So what is this dire news you have to tell me of Nick? Surely the man cannot have changed so greatly in five days. Oh, do not smile. When you have seen him, you may well know. He spends long hours with her every day. If he should let fall to her one word of what, of what he knows, then all that we have planned might well... Take care, Nick. There are too many years I do not trust behind these doors. Well, then ask that he, too, show a little care. This diary he leaves open about the house for any who might care to see. Indeed, this is not well. He was always most cautious to keep this locked from view. But no longer. And see here the curious marking of the days. Each day that passes, he marks off. And, and here, about the date of June the 10th, a heavy ring is placed. What does that mean? I cannot say. It is most strange, I grant you. He must be made to know again the thing this woman is and the uses she will make of him. How? Ask that this night he dine with you in company with Sir Percy. Say that you will return here later. Test him. Dare that he whisper of this to her while he is in her arms. Oh, before this night is out, he will well know the trust he can place in her. Bring Sir Percy here with Lydia and Judith Pamphlin in the same house? Yes. Oh, the risk is too great. But there will be no risk, and they won't overhear one word. Of that I vow. Ah, Lord Howell. Welcome. Somewhat formal greeting, is it not, Nick? Oh, forgive me. Uh, it was in the nature of a jest. I see you've been in private converse with Meg York. Why not? Who else but Meg is there to trust in this house? There is at least one other. Who? My wife. I will bear no slander of her name within this house. Oh, you scarce have spoken so a few brief days ago. There is but one who deserves such title. Does you small credit to slight her so, forgetting all she sacrificed for you these past three years. 
Meg? My courage and loyalty deserve far better at your hands. Forgive me, it might be better that I move. Oh, no, stay a moment, Meg. No, you'll feel much more free to speak without me, I'm sure. That was unkind, Dick. You might at least avert she stay. Forgive me, I am somewhat disturbed. Yes, indeed you might be. This newfound trust you place in Lydia puts all of us in danger. Danger? The danger is to her. Did I not find her close to death but five days past? Yes, and what are those whose death she yet must answer for? There's been far too much fatal leakage of information issued forth in this house and will again. If you allow her charm to take you in. This is spoken in venom. It is more than I'm ready to believe. Oh, and are you willing to put her to test? How? I dine tonight with Lord Percy. Mark you, Lydia has not forgot. It was he that gave sentence to her father. Tell her you are joining us tonight and will return thereafter. You ask me to practice such deceit upon my wife? Dick, we have been friends these many years. Think you I would ask this were it not to save you from one who would betray you without qualm. Oh, this is more than I'm ready to believe. What part has Meg York played in this? You know not now the trust that you ought to make. No word that I can say will serve. We dine tonight at Steele's. I trust you will join us there. Ah, Judith. Is my husband still closeted with Lord Harwell? No, mistress. Lord Harwell left as I came up the stairs. Ah, oh, then Nicholas will be here at any moment. Hand me my glass quickly, Put woman. chocolate first. Set it down. My glass. Hurry. Oh, indeed. I pray you be not deluded by the sudden change in him. <laughs> indeed, it is he who is deluded. He is most wondrous changed. And that is good for my purpose. Changed? He's still the knavish royalist who boasted when he married you that he would tame the roundhead maid. <laughs> and has he tamed me? You give me small credit, Judith. I have not forgot he was among the men who hanged my father at Tyburn Hill. I shall know well how to use his new trust in me. Ah, Nick, I had begun to f uh, think you would not come. Ah, you're still up, I see. It has not tired you. Ah, oh, no, I'm vastly improved. I opened the window and the whole room smelled of the garden. It's spring, Nick. Yes, a whole new life is beginning. Yes, a most wonderful, exciting new life. Soon, soon I will be strong enough to be all that you deserve. It's enough now merely to be close to you. <laughs> I would not put your gallantry or your patience to such a test. Come, sup up here with me tonight, dearest one. We can be alone. Uh, sup? No, I fear not. I dine tonight at Steele's. Ah, with whom? George Harwell and Sir Percy. Sir Percy? Yes, we will return here later on. Sir Percy, truly? Truly. Ah, then it is I who must have patience, is it not? Good evening, Giles. Good evening, sir. Come into the uh, library, gentlemen. We should be quite quiet there. Giles, we do not wish to be disturbed. Is there wine later? Yes, sir. They are come. Sir Percy is with them. Yes, they wish not to be disturbed. Indeed, I would not have them be. You would not have no. me? If I am found, I will but say I have come to bid Sir Nicholas good night. I stood here and watched her. She had her ear pressed to the door. You would not take her, my, her word against mine? You knew Sir Percy was with me. Were you eager to greet him, too? Ah, oh, Nick, I, I did forget, I swear it. It would perhaps be best if you return to your room. I will come when my friends have left. 
I bid you good night. Dixon! Oh. Lydia! Forgive me, I haven't got in my room. No, Meg. No. I would have you share a glass of wine. Oh? It's small apology to make for my distrust. Oh, Nick. You wish me with you truly? Truly. Oh, thank you. I have far more to thank you for. Shall we go in? as though the weight of all that is unalterable would hold it back. How little we know of what is past. How little truth we can unearth. A mad obsession drove me here to save a human life. Oh, far more than save, I wanted to possess. Now, all the desire is gone. All that remains is but a cold resolve to keep a woman I no longer love alive for Twelve more hours. No, Judith. Thus far I cannot go. Indeed you must. His lies are shameless. He would protect your life indeed. And so all witnesses against him are dismissed. The house left empty and deserted. I warned you then, I warn you now. Your death is planned. Sit idly by and you'll not wait the morning. But what am I to do? He will not let us go. He holds us here. You need but agree. I'll answer for the rest. I'd hear the plot before I'd give consent. Then follow close. As soon as it be dark. We came at once. How many are with you? Two. Tis well. This night they plan black murder. Within the hour, Sir Nicholas will step forth. Their meeting place is Holbein Gate, which he must never reach. Will he be alone? Yes. We will wait his leaving. I'll not be long. I shall wait. I'll take the tray. No, I would see it in her hand myself. As you wish. Who can that be at this time? I'll go look. It is Lord Harwell. Well, let him in, Meg. I'll be down at once. Lord Harwell, what hour is this for you to be abroad? Truth it is so foul a night, I thought it best to keep well clear the streets. You dine close by? At Steele's. Come in. Nick will be down directly. I am then welcome. Oh, you know full well you are. <laughs> Ah, there is a glow in your cheek tonight, Meg. Mm -hmm. And the smile has come back to your eyes. I am glad to see you happy. Oh, it was for a while as though this were not Nick at all. As though some stranger had walked in the door. <gasps> Faith, that is true. Ah, but then, that's all past now. Therefore, guard him well, Meg. <laughs> for he is needed. How? Has he not told you? Oh, no, he doesn't speak of these matters now. Well, there is little I can say, Meg, other than that the king's life may very well depend upon Nick within these next few days. Watch over him, Meg. Let no harm come to him. I shall do what a woman can. It is enough. Oh, George, what brings you here? <laughs> I came to plead a night's lodging, Nick. There's a throat-cutting fog over London. <laughs> you uh, would spend the night? <laughs> Am I not welcome? Oh, Lord Harwell, Nick is beset with foreboding that there is some danger to Lydia tonight. Uh -huh. well, what sort? Sit down, I'll pour you some wine. Oh, indeed, it will be most welcome. <laughs> Nick, that's Lydia! Oh, vile, vile, to do this openly with your own hand! Oh, my, what is it? What is happening? Listen, listen! <laughs> Does her agony not speak for herself? She's dying, dying at their hands! That's a lie! I must find a physician. She's torn with pain. Oh, Nick, how did this happen? I do not know. Do not hold me now. No, no, no. You cannot go that way. This night wind is your sword. It's here by the stairs. And for my sake as well, Meg, he must not go alone. Meg, Meg, swear to me. Give me your oath. You'll not go near that room till I return. Swear it, I Meg. I swear. Good. Come. <laughs> It was you, then, 
that set those dogs on them. Let me buy. No, 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 I will not. Let her buy. Oh. Let her buy. Mistress. Oh. Then let my father rest quiet in his grave. Close the door, Judas. Above an hour that they've been gone. Yes. It's over then. Yes, it's over. Now begins the fear. Of what? There'll be no questions asked. Only those we'll ask ourselves. I have no regrets. Rest, child, and put all blame on me. You've more coldness in you, Judith, than I. <gasps> you are surprised then to see me alive. Nick! What happened? Do not lie. You will this to happen. You feigned only to be ill. You set the trap. And for your pains, George Harwell's dead. And Meg. Dead too, most likely. At the hands of your assassins. Oh, I do <laughs> regret the plague that holds me from driving this sword through your heart. It is well deserved. Spare her no, spare her no blame. It was my doing, mine alone. Get out, my get out. Meg. No, Meg, Meg, Meg. Every other she deserves to die. Yes, but not by your hand, Meg, not by your hand. Why, why, what devil's hold is he on you? I cannot tell you, but stay from this room tonight, Meg. Oh, no. Meg. Go, Meg. Go, Meg. Go, Meg. Oh, Judith. Judith, what torches does he hold in store for me? Come, come, you must rest. I cannot, I cannot sleep. Come, we'll find some way. Perhaps one of the powders. I have not taken them for these many weeks. Yes, yes. They'll do you no harm this night. <sighs> Here, child. Thank you, dear Judith. I'll lie back and let me stroke your hand. <sighs> your hand is cool. a moment, look at our Westinghouse program at Betty Furness. X marks the spot. Well, that sounds interesting. What does the spot mark? The spot where you can buy the world's finest refrigerator and pay less for it than you think. So look in your local paper or in your phone directory and find the name and address of your nearest Westinghouse dealer because he'll make it easy for you to own the wonderful new frost-free refrigerator that defrosts itself completely and always keeps itself frost-free. Before I tell you how it does that, let me tell you how a couple of other refrigerators defrost themselves. There are some that have a clock in the refrigerator, and the clock turns the refrigerator off, and then when it gets warm enough, the frost melts. Well, the Westinghouse frost-free doesn't use a clock, because how does a clock know when a refrigerator needs defrosting? Then there are also some refrigerators that have a heating coil like this that they put right here under the freeze chest. And they melt the frost by heating up the coil. But what about the frozen foods here in the freeze chest? Don't you suppose perhaps that they might be melting too at the same time? The fact is the Westinghouse Frost Free is the only refrigerator that has completely solved the problem of automatic defrosting. It's the only automatic refrigerator that was tested in kitchens all over the country for 10 whole years before it was put on the market. And here's the secret. It's this magic counter button. Only Westinghouse has it. It's the sign of the frost-free system. You see, every time the door opens and closes, this knob here pushes this button, and it registers the opening. Now, when the door has opened enough times for the frost to begin to form, that button automatically sends a signal to the frost-free system. And the little frost is wiped away so swiftly that every one of your frozen foods in here stays safely, firmly frozen. And there are no pans or jars for you to empty because the defrost water evaporates automatically. Isn't that wonderful? 
Go to your Westinghouse dealer and tell him that Betty Furness said that he'd give you a good deal on a genuine frost-free refrigerator. And remember, you can be sure if it's Westinghouse. We return now to Westinghouse Studio One and the Devil in Velvet. Why did you stay my hand? Why? Be still, Meg, be still. But five more strokes of the clock and we'll be free. Oh, you are possessed. What madness is this? Quiet, quiet. Ten. <laughs> eleven. Twelve. <laughs> Oh, Meg! Meg, the hour has passed! I've won! I've won! Oh, no, <laughs> you've lost! What else can stand between us now? Yet you would strive to save the one thing holding us apart. I don't understand you, Nick. She schemed to take your life. No, no, to take yours! Had those twelve strokes not sounded, you would have hanged in Nougat prison. How? How do you know so well what lies ahead? I cannot answer. Yet I know. Oh, Nick, I want to believe you. Mm. Truly, I do. But you defy my trust. Every word you make me doubt. I do not will it, but I doubt. Oh, dear Meg, dear Meg. No longer must you doubt. Could you not wait till the body was cold? What? Your wife is dead. Oh. Dead? How? She was well enough not ten minutes past. Yes, the poison was swift. Is this some trick you try again? This is no trick. Ask her, she knows. Ah. You were alone with her. If anyone's done it, it is you. Did I supply the powers to help her rest? I gave them to her, yes, but only to help her sleep. A different sleep from that which you had planned. Now wait, answer me before you leave this house. What are those powders of which you speak? Those she brought from the apothecary some six weeks past. Are you mad? The guilt is branded on her face. Meg. You don't believe I go this. for the guard. Do not, I warn you, try to save her now. Oh, Meg, Meg, why did you not tell me sooner? Why did you not? Tell I might have saved you. Tell you what? What of this have you not known from the start? I? Nothing. But, Nick, it was all your plan. Mine? Oh, you cannot have forgot. The golden sovereign you gave me that day to bribe the apothecary. The story we told of the rats within the cellar. All of it was yours. I but carried out the orders you gave. I? I? Oh, now I see. It was planned even then to blame me, to make me pay for the murder you had willed. No, Meg, Don't no. touch me, I loathe you. Meg. Oh, vastly clever, but oh, Nick, how vile to plan this with soft pretense that Lydia must be saved. And so I am sent, not you, to get the very thing should cause her death. And all of it to take blame from off your shoulders and place it onto mine. Well, know this, Nick, in your heart where the blame must lie. You willed her death, and you and you alone are the murderer. I should have guessed it a long time past. But, Meg, I did not know, I did not know. Oh, I see the plot, but well, from out her loathing, Judith will give blame alone to me. And you will be silent. Well, know this, Nicholas. What I have seen of you this night in this house fills me with so much disgust. I choose to die. I choose it. No, Don't Meg, no. It. Which is the one? The woman there. There is a charge of murder against you, Mr. Shork. What say you? What would you have me say? You believe me guilty before I speak. And are you not? No. She lies. She brought the powders, gave them to me with her own hands. She cannot deny it, ask her. Answer. I have nothing to say. Even he will bear me out on this. Is it not so? This, then, is how history is writ. Lies and false dealings. Death on the gallows to the innocent. Long life and honor to the guilty. This was not the history I came to cheat. But cheat it I shall. We wait your answer, sir. All that you have heard is false. Meg York is innocent of this charge. I poisoned my wife, not she. Oh, Nick, he lies. He tries but to protect the wench. I can offer full proof, Captain. I'm prepared to sign a full confession to this deed. Sir Nicholas, this means the gallows. 
I know it well. Take me in custody, sir. Oh, it is far better this way, dear Meg. Far better. I am ready, Captain. Then come with me. Remain here. See that no one approaches the room. Good chap. Is it time? A few minutes only, my son. And the warden, did he grant my request? No. And Mr. Short will not be allowed to visit you. Well, it was little enough to ask. She has bid me bring you this note, however, my lord. Oh, thank you, Father. There are only moments left us both on earth. For when you die, I feel I, I too. Shall in that moment cease to live. I had a strange dream last night, but we were safe and together again in some far distant time. And it may be if our love is strong enough, we can indeed make this be true. For I love you, Nick, more than any earthly bond can tie our souls together. May. It is time. Time to cheat history? I have only one hope now, that by this act I may reclaim my soul. I ask no more of life. It is time, sir. I am ready. I ask only, Father, that you pray for me. I will pray, my son. Now, Captain? Yes. I'm sorry, ma'am. The professor disappeared. He has gone. Gone? Did he not say to you he would not come back? When did he leave? Not above a moment ago, to be exact. I, I don't believe you. Jeff! Jeff, where are you? I cannot hear you, miss. Shout as you will. I don't believe you. Jeff! You're Jeff. not there? See for yourself. What have you done with him? Answer me! It was a bargain, man. <laughs> Urged by him and signed by him. <laughs> there is danger ever when one tempts the devil. <laughs> no! No! Not I! The woman must be hanged. Hang the woman. Not I. The woman. Jeff. Jeff. Oh. oh, so old Nick Fenton is dead at last. It took no more than one word of truth to tighten the rope around his neck and close the span of two centuries. Are you all right? Are you safe? Yes, quite safe now. May the soul of Sir Nicholas Fenton rest in peace at last. Oh. 
Oh, Jeff, do let's get out of here. Yes. Now I'm ready. Furness to talk about fire engines. Uh-huh. Running your fire engine on that beautiful tea table, eh? Well, we needn't worry, because the surface of this table is lovely Westinghouse My Carter. See? It doesn't have a single scratch on it. Oh, incidentally, this handsome table was designed by Jens Rism. And it's no wonder that the top designers and decorators are using decorative micarta for all their smart new furniture. It's so beautiful, and yet it's so practical. Micarta resists stains and burns, too, as well as scratches. It takes the heaviest household wear, and yet it never needs to be waxed or polished or refinished. You just wipe it off with a damp cloth, and it glows just like the finest wood. And what's more, my carter can be used for any kind of surface, too, for kitchen counters or walls or furniture. As a matter of fact, I'd like you to see some of the wonderful colors and patterns that my carter comes in, and if you write to me, I'll send you this my carter color guide book. Just write to Betty Furness, Westinghouse, Pittsburgh 30, Pennsylvania. And I'll send you this book, and I'll also send you a sample of Westinghouse my carta, free sample, just like that, so that you can see for yourself how beautifully it would fit into your home. You'll agree that the practical beauty of my carta is at home in any room. You can be sure if it's Westinghouse. <laughs> This is Paul Brinson saying goodnight for Westinghouse, makers of more than 40 million products for the American home. We hope you'll be with us again next week. Meanwhile, remember, this is National Big Brother Week. Help stop juvenile delinquency. Support the Big Brothers of America with your time and the funds they need. And now until next week, goodnight.